um, uh, mistreatments or uh, opposition, insults, and uh, how do you respond? Do you tend to react? Minsan, we are just like the world that would uh, uh, react the way the world reacts. And sasabihin natin, nasa katuwiran ka, nasaktan ako, kailangan akong gumante, kailangan akong lumaban. But, listen, wait a minute. Uh, what really is meekness that God would want us to develop? Oh, there is another scholar, Kenneth West. He describes meekness as temper of the spirit in which we accept all circumstances of life, even mistreatment and injustice, with patience and without the spirit of retaliation. You know, this is one thing that we need to develop amongst us believers. Accept even mistreatment and injustice with patience and without a spirit of retaliation. Oh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon explains meekness as an entire submission to the divine will, to God's chastening as well as his, to his teachings. The truly meek are also gentle towards their fellow men. Uh, these meek people bear and forbear and forgive even though they have just cause for resentment. Are you in a situation where you have the just cause for resentment but instead of reacting instead of trying to get even you have that uh, that kind heart to bear to forbear to forgive now they also can continue to live with much perseverance and such people are also lowly in themselves if thou has a right idea of thyself thou art so little and so inconsiderable that whoever approaches thee, approaches severe no money, so it does not matter. Sometimes you may be thinking, I'm, uh, I'm uh, uh, the person to whom the world revolves around. Let us be aware that we are just insignificant. Yes, the Lord has died for us, but at the same time, we should be aware that who, who are we? We should be thankful that God, by His grace, saved us and uh, given us eternal life. And so, when you look at all of this uh, definition by scholars, you will see one point. Um, an analysis produces the following punch functional definition, meekness, yung kahinahunan, kah ka kaamuan, uh, is an awareness and response, positive response to God's determinant power, in infinite wisdom, and controlling purpose, Evidence by gentleness, humility, faith, confident assurance, and acceptance of the divine will. You really recognize that God is in control. God knows what is going on in your life, and you submit. You have that uh, awareness and uh, response to God's uh, uh, determinant power and infinite wisdom and controlling purpose. Uh, you know, this is very, very important reminder for us believers. There are occasions that we tend to uh, get out of control in our reaction that uh, we tend to, what? To rock the boat and even the, the problem has, uh, will uh, spill over to other believers who have nothing to do with it. So, be aware that this is God's desire. Uh, uh, meekness again is an awareness and response to God's determinant power, infinite wisdom, and controlling purpose, evidence by gentleness, humility, faith, confident assurance, and acceptance of the divine will. We know that God knows what is going on. The Bible tells us in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together, together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. But at times, we are just aware, familiar, memorize all these uh, verses, but are we applying it in our lives? Are we, ex ex are we exemplifying even this virtue that is least respected, that is sometimes misunderstood, meekness? meekness folks we need to have this kind of virtue meekness as we grow in the lord in our service in the lord's work let us be aware that meekness is a fruit of the holy spirit 
Now, the ministry of meekness, a study of the New Testament reveals that meekness is constantly associated with ministry. And this ministry is first internal in the lives of those who would minister and then external in the ministry that is extended to others. It is internal first in those who would minister and then it is external to those um, where the ministry is uh, directed to. Now, meekness applies to at least five areas. First, it enables the application of the Word of God. It enables the application of the Word of God. The attitude of a person has about God, you know, will determine how the Word of God will be received. What is our attitude towards the Bible? What is our attitude toward the Word of God? We thank God for what we are having in our men's meeting. We are preparing the men for Bible studies in government offices and uh, even in other private offices. And uh, uh, it has to start in the Word of God. Thank God that uh, Deacon De Ocampo, the Dean of the College, is the one uh, handling this lesson. And, uh, you know, it starts with the Word of God. We have to be saturated with the Word of God. The Word of God, which is in Aaron, inspired, infallible, complete revelation of God to man. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 13, 13, Whoso despises the Word shall be destroyed, but he that keepeth the commandment shall be rewarded. How is our attitude with the Word of God? The Bible tells us in James 1, 21, it gives instruction about this. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with, look at that, receive with meekness, then drop the word which is able to save your souls. When a Christian approaches the Bible with a spirit of meekness, you know, he or she is able to accept its instruction even though it brings conviction and even if the instruction is difficult to understand. Ganyan po ang isang tao na may uh, virtue ng kahinahunan, na may virtue ng uh, kaamuan. He is able to accept uh, the instruction of the Word of God, even though it brings conviction to his soul, to his mind, and even if the instruction is difficult to understand. Understanding that God's infinite wisdom and controlling purpose is at work in His Word opens the way to receive it. Oh, this becomes a vital element in the application of a scripture to a Christian life. When you know that that is God's word and that is for you, the rhema of God, as, a, as the preacher preaches, the pastor preaches, you know that it is God's word directed to you. There are times that they are wondering, Pastor, bakit nyo nalaman na yun ang pangangailangan ko? Sino po nagsabi sa inyo na ganito po ako? Wala akong alam dyan eh. Basta, I just preach the word. And the Word of God comes to you as a particular word, a rhema of God at that particular instance. And you just receive it as the Word of God for you. And you accept it uh, with a, a, a heart that uh, is uh, uh, welcoming the Word of God, yielding to the desire of God's, uh, God for you. So, it enables the application of the Word of God. Also, it enables effective instruction. The attitude of a teacher has a great impact on how his teaching is received. Tayo po, pagka nagtuturo, what is our attitude? No? Uh, may, medyo, may, may, you know, uh, we are to be, the Bible tells us, if you look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, 24-26, Paul gives specific instruction about this. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, up to tits. Look at that. Patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Meekness is very important. It enables effective instruction. In meekness, look at that. Instructing those that oppose themselves, if God for adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledged an acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him and his will. See, especially when approaching those who are living and doing things that are self-destructive, God will use the meek spirit of the teacher to minister instruction. Mahirap naman na with arrogance we will be telling that person 
And then, napakahirap na ang arrive doon sa tao. Ang bihira naman ito, ang yamang-yamang. Oh? Look at that. Uh, it enables effective instruction. And that is clearly seen in the Word of God. It enables effective witness. Oh, this same spirit of meekness can be used by God to open the heart of the unbeliever. Yung puso po ng mga di mananampalataya, when we approach them in the spirit of meekness, you can just imagine how the Spirit of God will work in their hearts. The gentleness, humility, faith, and confident assurance of the witness is a great aid in communication. Uh, that is why uh, we have mentioned this in 1 Peter chapter 3, in verse 15, where the Bible tells us, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Look at that, with meekness and reverential fear. We are not studying the Word of God to parade our knowledge before the world that we know the Scriptures. No, it's not that one. We thank God that we can be instructed from the Word of God. And when we are given the opportunity to teach the Word of God, we are to teach that in meekness. Meekness. You see, this is very, very important lesson in the ministry. It enables effective witness. Uh, again, God uses the spirit of a Christian to minister the gospel to the lost. Kaya minsan, you have to be careful about confrontational evangelism. Be careful about that. You might win the debate, but you lose the person. Oh, we thank God that we can be armed with the uh, um, uh, tools as we study in Bible school. But we have been always telling, uh, sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Be ready always to give an answer to every man who asks you the reason of the hope that is in you. But how do you do that? With meekness and fear. Meekness and fear. No one knows everything. It's only by the grace of God that we are able to uh, uh, understand the deep things of God by His Spirit and we, we share what we know. We thank God that, that we know what we believe and why we believe what we believe. But at the same time, as we go out there and witness, we should be aware that it's only by the grace of God that we have this, this knowledge. We do not arrogate ourselves and tell them that we are the only ones saved and you are going to hell. Folks, our study is not for us to argue, to debate, but it is for us to be used by God in explaining with meekness and fear what we know. When we go to these government offices and uh, private offices as we conduct Bible studies, oh, you know, the attitude of the teacher is very important as we communicate the Word of God. It enables effective witness. Also, another ministry uh, of, of, of uh, meekness, it empowers spiritual influence. Oh, there is probably no more difficult situation than a saved wife trying to win her unbelieving husband. Oh, the Apostle Peter deals with this problem. If you will look at 1 Peter chapter 3, you will find him here in verse 1 to 4. It is significant that the meek spirit is declared to be essential if the husband is to be won. Look at that in verses 1 to 4. It gives the inspired instruction. Likewise. Look at that. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word. Look at that. If any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be the outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on a apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek. The ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which in the sight of God of great price. You can look at the Word of God, and the Word of God is always consistent. Folks, of the power of this spirit, Matthew Henry writes, the finest ornament of a Christian woman 
is a meek and quiet spirit, a tractable, easy temper of mind, void of passion, pride, and immoderate anger, discovering itself in a quiet, obliging behavior towards their husbands and families. You see, there is no way so likely to win a husband as a prudent, meek behavior of the wife. I hope you understand. As we look at the Word of God, you can see the ministry of meekness. It also assists in a spiritual restoration. It assists in a spiritual restoration of familiar passage, Galatians 6.1. An important spiritual ministry is restoring those who have fallen. You know, how many of you have been engaged in this, involved in this? Restoring those who have fallen. Sometimes, we will be having that arrogant spirit. Ah, buti nga, nagkasala. Ah, tanggal ka na. But you not behave like that. You do not know when your time will come. You be very careful. See, uh, the Lord commands that those attempting such a restoration ministry possess the spirit of meekness. In Galatians 6.1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a pole, ye which are spiritual, restore. Look at that. Ye who are spiritual, restore. I've been always telling that restoration here is very, very painful at times. When you restore someone, it takes pain because the Greek word is katartizo, which means to put back into alignment. And just like a joint, uh, a, a bone out of joint, put back into the alignment at uh, what is the hospital, Brother John, at the orthopedic, no? And you can just imagine, pagka <laughs> napapa luha ka, isang ganyan. Restore. When you restore someone, it has to be done in the spirit of meekness. The spirit of meekness. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Consider yourselves. Baka ikaw na nagsasabi nito, baka mamaya ikaw naman ang susunod. You check yourself. See, Albert Burns described the spirit of meekness required here. With a kind, forbearing, and forgiving spirit, not with anger, not with a lordly and overbearing mind, not with a love uh, of finding others in fault, and with a desire for inflicting the, the discipline of the church, not with a harsh and unforgiving temper, but with love and gentleness and humility and patience and with the readiness to forgive when wrong has been done sometimes you have to balance it yes we need purity in the body but how do you apply that purity that discipline and folks this is the battleground you be very careful yes last wednesday um missionary joseph soriano made mention about the the devices of the devil lest satan get an advantage of us because we are not ignorant of his devices. Oh, you, you are involved in restoration, you pray. You check your heart, you see. It should be with a desire, not for inflicting the, dis the discipline of the church, not with a harsh and unforgiving temper, but with love. With love and gentleness and humility and patience with a readiness to forgive when wrong has been done. Oh, if you will just put yourself in the place of that person and the family of those that are affected because of what has happened, how would you respond? How would you react? This is a lesson that we really need to understand. There are occasions that I have to be counseling, dealing with people, and I ask the Lord, Lord, I am not used to this i do not know what i'll do give me wisdom give me uh, patience how i can handle this there are times that i have to you know that there are times that uh, if, if a person is not anymore listening no. i have also the temper folks i will not hide that there are times that i have to napapahawak ako dun si binigay sa akin ni ni david uh, 
Africa, Tanzania. Dave Jones. Nakikita niyo yung binigay ni Dave Jones na isang pamalo ng what? Pamalo ng para sa uh, parang it is hard for thee to kick against the prick. But at the same time, I asked the Lord, Lord, oh, give me patience and I want it now. <laughs> I just have to get out, go to the restroom and pray. You know, there are occasions like that. It's really difficult. But folks, we need to have meekness. Some of you might misunderstand that. Mahina naman ito si pastor eh. Hindi pa, ginamit ang kamay na bakal eh. I can do that. But that is not what the Holy Spirit of God desires for us to be doing. I can pichara a person. Ano yung pichara sa English? Pichara, pichara. No? Uh, and mm, bakit dito mo pa ginawa yan? No? You know, before I got saved, I had a bad temper. But at times, uh, parang bumahabalik pagka it has to be under control. And folks, that is meekness. Meekness assists in spiritual restoration with love, with gentleness, with humility, and patience, and with the readiness to forgive when wrong has been done. And this is an essential qualification for restoring and recovering an offending brother. Oh, no man should attempt to rebuke or admonish another who cannot do it in the spirit of meekness. Let me repeat. No one, no man should attempt to rebuke or admonish another if you cannot do it in the spirit of meekness. This is really very important ministry. The ministry of meekness. It enables the application of the Word of God. It enables effective instruction. It enables effective witness. It assists. It empowers spiritual influence and it assists in spiritual restoration. Oh, let's look at the models of meekness. An example is Moses. Although the Bible presents several examples of meekness, two outstanding examples we can cite in here. First, the example of Moses. He was the leader who called down the, uh, the ten plagues upon Egypt. Uh, he led the children of Israel out of bandage. You know very well, Moses. And he brought down the Ten Commandments from Sinai. Yet, Moses is described as the meekest of men. Remember Moses? He's described in the Bible as the meekest of men. If you will look at Numbers 12, 3, it says, Now the man Moses was very meek. Very meek. Above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. His conduct when faced with opposition and adversity, make an excellent study in meekness. We do not have the luxury of time to go through of the, all of this, but you can see, minsan, dumating na din kay Moses yung buwan eh. Yung uh, pagka, pagka umapaw na, kailangan kalusin mo na. Kaya, he, what did he do with the rock? Instead of speaking to the rock, he strike the rock. Minsan dumadating din yan. But Moses, the Bible tells us, is a very meek person. Who else? Of course, we have the example of Christ. One of the characteristics of the promised Messiah was meekness. If you will look at second, uh, Zechariah 9.9, in Zechariah 9.9, the Bible tells us, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. In Matthew 21, 5, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. In Matthew 11, 28, look at that. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. The light and the spirit of Jesus Christ speaks this prophecy perfectly. You can see even in Matthew 21, 5, Zechariah 9, 9, he even described himself in these terms, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, 
and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Obviously, the outstanding demonstration of Christ's meekness is His approach and an endurance of the cross. You see, in the cross, uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, He submitted to His Father's will, right? Uh, he submitted with a spirit of meekness. And in His trial, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ didn't defend Himself, but accepted its unjust consequences. In Isaiah 53, 7, it describes His meekness in this word. He was oppressed, He was afflicted, yet He opened not His mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and a sheep before her shearers is done, so He openeth not His mouth. Look at that. He openeth not His mouth. Oh, before Pilate, he again demonstrated meekness when he said, if you will look at John 19, 11, Thou couldest have no power, thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee had the greater sin. Finally, Christ's meekness is expressed even in the words in Hebrews chapter 12, in verse 2 to 3, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who... For the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him, look at that, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Christ's attitude, folks, Christ's attitude of meekness was the result of his knowledge of his father's determinant power infinite wisdom and controlling purpose what he was going through he knows that this is in god's sovereign plan determinant power infinite wisdom and controlling purpose oh you can look at other examples that but the one that we have at this time they are excellent examples of those people uh, who have uh, demonstrated this virtue of meekness and no one can beat the Lord Jesus Christ and even Moses now we move on to the method the method for meekness paano ba natin ma-achieve ito paano ba natin ma-develop ito okay God you know in his great love provide meekness for the believer as an element uh, of the new birth the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the pursuit of godly life that should be our pursuit in our Christian life. Uh, develop this virtue. It is an element of the new birth. Oh, at conversion, the new birth imparts meekness as part of the divine nature that makes us like Christ. If you look at Colossians chapter 3, in verse 10 and 12, it declares that the Christian is to let this virtue have expression and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. If you will look at verse 12, if you will jump to verse 12, the Bible tells us, Put on therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. When you look at all of this, Kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. All of this, you know, brethren, this is what the Lord would want to develop in us. Hindi yung mga pakitang tao yan o pa-effect. It should be coming from inside. The influence of the Holy Spirit of God in our lives. And when we are controlled or filled by the Holy Spirit, you can just imagine what happens outwardly. You see, it is an element of the new birth. When we are indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God is ours that we be infilled by Him, be controlled by Him. And the Bible tells us, put on therefore as the elect of God. Are you not God's elect? You are saved. Elect of God. 
holy and beloved bowels of mercies. What are we to put on? Are we truly merciful? Kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. If you are truly saved, there will be no problem developing this virtue. Folks, we are looking at the methods for meekness. You cannot have this kind of virtue if you are not born again, if you are not born of the Spirit of God. It has to come from God. And then we can see it is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit as a Christian yields to His, uh, uh, as the Christian yield to uh, the Spirit of God. You can see the Holy Spirit exerts more and more influence upon the life of the Christian. He produces His fruit in a person's life and uh, as listed, if you will look at Galatians 5, 22 to 23, but the fruit, the, the fruit of the Spirit is love. And again, let me tell you that the fruit there is in the singular, which really refers to the love. And the love there uh, is described in this succeeding uh, uh, description, characteristic, uh, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. If you look at verse 23, meekness. If you look at verse 23, temperance against such, there is no law. Look, folks, this is very important to take note. Uh, uh, when, when you have uh, the Spirit of God in you, controlling in you, uh, all of these, uh, these qualities will be present. Kaya palagi natin binamanggit, we do not believe in 90% spiritual and 10% carnal. When you are spiritual, you are spiritual 100%. The fruit of the Spirit is manifest in you. And what are these? You can see it's love. And love is the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces. And what kind of love? It is characteristic of joy, no? uh, uh, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. And you can see temperance. And the Bible tells us you cannot legislate that. It is coming from within. When the work, when the Spirit of God works in your heart, in your life, oh, you will see it is manifest in a life that is Spirit-filled. Thus, the Holy Spirit works in the believer to make him or her more like Christ. Thus, more meek and lowly. The Lord Jesus Christ again said, For I am meek and lowly. God desires us for us to be Christ-like, meek and lowly. There are times you are probably in a gathering, and there is a tendency to, you know, I'm not saying that you should not manifest your, you just, you just be there, composed, try to, and uh, 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 sometimes uh, uh, you, you will say, but I, I should not be treated this way. I'm an important person. Oh, you have the tendency to, to behave like that. Oh, you, uh, you are in a gathering, and uh, bakit hindi man ako tinawag? No? Uh, di ba ako ay, no, do not, do not assume, do not expect, and just uh, stay as you are, and uh, it's the Lord who will, who will uh, uh, be the one to, uh, to cause that uh, person to recognize you. You may, you may not be recognized. But, you see, when you have the spirit of meekness, you just continue to, oh, thank God, I'm here, I'm enjoying the company of believers. Oh, hindi ka naman nagpunta sa isang conference para ikaw ay ma-recognize at ma-upload. Sometimes we have the tendency to think of that. Oh, oh. You are there to enjoy and uh, uh, you sit down, you, you listen, and after that, uh, of course, you fellowship and thank God for the 
the sweet spirit of fellowship. But sometimes you can see as you fellowship, there are some people who have that kind of spirit of, and uh, you avoid people who have that kind of spirit and just pray, do not judge. Okay? We do not judge people. Remember, we are not called to be judges. We are called to be witnesses. The spirit of meekness. It is also the pursuit of a godly life. Finally, this virtue is so valuable, valued, and important. It is to be sought consciously by the Christian. And this is what Paul instructs Timothy. If you will look at 1 Timothy 6.11, the Apostle Paul tells Timothy, But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. What are we to follow? Plead these worldly things. Plead these things that are appealing to the flesh. But follow after righteousness. We thank God for the righteousness of God. Here in his book, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. And it is also to be an element of a Christian spiritual calling. If you look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. What is the Bible tells us? Verse 1 and 2. The Bible tells us, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation where we ye are called, in verse 2, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. As with other virtues, this one can be sought through prayer study and careful monitoring of one's attitudes and actions folks let me tell you it is really god's desire that we as christians who are growing in the lord growing in grace and in the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ develop this least expected respected virtue meekness submission patience it is all encapsulated in this. And when we look at the end, the majesty of meekness, oh, this virtue is elevated by Christ. And it is linked to important promises in God's Word. The Bible tells us the meek are beautified with salvation. If you will look at Psalm 149, verse 4, For the Lord taketh pleasure in His people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. And the Bible tells us in Matthew 5, 5 again, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. These are marvelous rewards for allowing God's determinant power, infinite wisdom, and controlling purpose to dominate our spirit to produce meekness. Are we in this category? Are we truly desiring this virtue of meekness? It is for those who are saved, it is the fruit of the Spirit, and it is the pursuit of godly life. Folks, we have been exposed or given a lot of lessons from this pulpit, and I hope that even with this reminder, it might be a simple reminder for us, but this is God's desire that at times we tend to ignore in handling Conflicts in handling differences, I would to God that we will truly exemplify the virtue of meekness. In handling even Bible studies, in communicating the pure word of God, let us exemplify the virtue of meekness. You can be preaching the word, sharing the word with confidence, dynamism, but inside 
there is still that awareness that without the Spirit of God, we are nothing. Without God working in our hearts and enabling us to communicate the truth to others, wala po tayong magagawa. We are not doing the ministry para magpasikat. We are not doing the ministry to present ourselves as intelligent or, oh, excellent. We are not in competition, remember. We are to be having that spirit of meekness always. And as you look at this ministry, uh, uh, needs, qualifications, it helps us in our application of the Word of God. It helps us, even enables us to uh, uh, restore uh, effectively another brother who has uh, been in fault, in sin. And many of these uh, uh, benefits that you can think, meekness. God desires us to have a meek and quiet spirit and allow the Lord to work in the heart of that other person. Folks, we do not control the heart. It's the Lord who controls the heart, the mind. We are just to demonstrate what God desires for us. A spirit of meekness. Be filled with the spirit. And all of these other things, you know, will come into right operation in the lives of even other believers that you are ministering. I don't know how the Lord has spoken to you. Maybe you have someone you have a bitterness against or you have ought against a person. No? You're offended or you're the offender. What is the Bible telling us? Approach that person. Get things right. It's not about you. It's not about that person. It's about God's grace in your life. And let us truly recognize that God desires for us to humble ourselves and make and quiet spirit knowing who God is. Who do you want to defend you? You or God? If you are maltreated, criticized, or what have you, how do you react? Or how do you respond? I hope as we move on to Christian maturity, we will not forget this virtue. Meekness. With meekness and fear, we share the word of God. Every head bowed, eyes closed, as you quietly stand to your feet. Almighty God and loving Father, thank you for this reminder. We need this lesson. We need this reminder. And we pray, Father, that you will help us to truly develop this virtue. By your grace, by your enabling power, we can do so. And we pray, Father, that you will just continue to manifest your great grace upon us, your people. Lord, there are times that we tend to ignore this uh, virtue that you would want us to develop. Help us to truly recognize that it is your desire for us to be different from the rest of the world. And when we do so, Lord, you are the ones who will work in the hearts of even those who oppose us. Lord, continue to help us to have a responsive heart, a heart that truly submits to your desire. Even now, Lord, as we have this altar call, your invitation, Lord, help us to have a heart that really is tender for your design. Lord, work in our needs, in its person's heart. If there is anyone here who is not yet sure of heaven, not yet sure that he or she is saved, Lord, speak to that person, enable that person to make a decision to turn from sin to righteousness in Christ. And truly from there, develop that, that virtue of meekness. Work in its one's heart, even at this time, Lord, 
We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Heads bowed, eyes closed. The Lord has spoken to your heart. The piano plays. Why don't you just come and talk to the Lord? Meekness. Will you come? Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. Will you have that kind of prayer? Or you, you know that you are, oh, nasa katuwiran ako ipaglalabang ko to. Folks, God desires for us to be meek. And when we demonstrate that kind of virtue, you know who will work. It's God, the Spirit of God. And you just can't understand how the Lord will touch that other person's heart. And who is the one magnified? God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we are doing this, the watching world will be wondering, will be amazed. And they will be magnetized to come to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of our lives. They will see a difference in our lifestyle, in our walk. And they will continue to trust in Jesus Christ. And you can just imagine the pull of this as we now manifest this virtue of meekness. Maybe there is somebody here who needs to follow the Lord in baptism to transfer his membership, whatever that decision is, will you come even at this time? God is fixed to your heart. Come on. With bendedness, you maybe you need to make that decision even now. Thank God for Yosiko and Noriko. What is it that God would want you to, to do?